Indonesian entrepreneur donates foldable table sets to flood survivors in Laos. More than a thousand residents from 19 villages attend the Buddha Day ceremony in Myanmar. Welcome to our headlines. I'm Mr. Rusu. Thank you for joining us. The Jie Foundation is distributing construction and farming supplies to the affected residents in Mozambique. The distribution in Lamigo has been carried out by local volunteers. Since there aren't any local volunteers in Beirut, many city volunteers have come from Maputo to help out. <laughs> If they have not been through suffering, how can they touch other people? When I first came to Lamego, I found that it is not easy to recruit volunteers. We have to keep communicating with the residents. We also need to let them know more about Siji's spirit of love. And Siji is also teaching them to help their fellow countrymen. Hoping to inspire the residents' compassion, Paula shares her own story with everyone. I used to be very isolated. I did not like to go out or interact with other people. Then my neighbors invited me to join Siji activities. I vowed to dedicate myself to Siji's work. With Paula's efforts, more than 200 local volunteers have joined Siji to carry out charity work. In the aftermath of the cyclone, Nanayo has come from Maputo to help out. The young man works mindfully, responsible for managing the supplies inventory. He knows how many bags of rice or construction supplies are left. He works from early morning till night. He even stays in one of the tents. When I first came, I did not know how I can help out. But the most important thing is that, as volunteers, regardless of the task, we will do our best to accomplish them. This distribution is organized and planned by local volunteers. No Asian faces are seen at the venue. It is also the best opportunity to pass down experiences. As a lot of aid supplies have arrived, the volunteers need to work as a team to ensure that the distribution can be carried out quickly. 36-year-old Delma is wearing a volunteer uniform that requires sewing. She is vowing to shoulder even more responsibilities. After completing this test at hand, I will be returning to Maputo to bring my family here. I think my mission is to stay here and continue to help the local residents. Two weeks after Cyclone Idai, in respect for those who passed away during the disaster, the Mozambique government once forbade the people to sing and dance. Half the local volunteers are singing to tell everyone that they've risen above life's challenges. After a dam broke in Laos last year, residents of six villages had to be relocated. So the volunteers have been caring for these affected residents. Recently, an entrepreneur has given 480 affected families foldable table sets. 480 households are here today as Suji volunteers demonstrate a simple foldable table set in a few seconds, which they're about to distribute. Last year, the collapse of a dam left affected residents to temporarily relocate to prefabricated homes while the government builds permanent housing. Many families have literally nothing in these homes. For this reason, these foldable table sets will be quite useful. The table can be used for doing homework. What else can it be useful for? can serve meals and what else, the family can sit here and have a chat. <laughs> this aid will help relieve the pain of these affected residents. It's a very useful item. 
We are truly quite happy to receive it today. We wish to thank the Ziji Foundation for all the care that they have shown to us. The distribution of these foldable table sets is made possible through the gift of an Indonesian entrepreneur. Upon receiving them, all the affected residents are quite happy, as it makes their temporary home all the more pleasant. City volunteers have traveled to Northern Jordan to hold a free clinic for Syrian refugees. In 2017, the United Nations ended the health care subsidy for Syrian refugees. Therefore, City's free clinic allowed the refugees to seek the much-needed medical attention. The city of Mafrak is located in northern Jordan, which is close to Syria. For eight years, the city has witnessed the Syrian civil war as millions of Syrian refugees have fled their hometown. Jordan closed its eight borders with Syria between 2015 to 2016. The border crossing between the two countries reopened to people in October 2018. Here we are at Jabber, a border crossing checkpoint near Syria. Syrian refugees can take this route to return to Syria. Syria. After crossing this border checkpoint, the Syrian refugees are no longer considered as displaced person. At the end of 2017, the Syrian government has called for its citizens to return back home. However, most of them chose to stay in Jordan. As the United Nations stops providing health care subsidies to the Syrian refugees, if they are sick, they have to seek medical attention from charity organizations. Today, we are here to meet three doctors who have been collaborating with Siji for a long time. They are here to conduct a free clinic for these Syrian refugee children. As uh, I am doctor, I like to help people, especially poor people. The Suchi organization also help uh, poor people. Therefore, I, I, we are working together. At the venue, we can see many people patiently waiting in line. We can also see that refugees lack medical resources. When we are sick, we need to go to the pharmacy or clinics for medications. However, we can't afford it. This is why we can only stay home. Three points very necessary and very important for kids in our country here. Uh, health care and education and supported food. Muhannan is a surgeon from Syria. A few months ago, he received his medical license in Jordan. There are 63 patients waiting outside his room. Originally, the free clinic is open up to 120 patients. However, 230 people have showed up. In addition, around 200 patients have the need for surgery. Our organization only come uh, do some operation and for uh, I think propaganda and one month, two months like that and uh, going from here. Zuchi organization do operation and continuous continuous be careful, be careful. The three doctors followed city volunteers and headed to Zatari. This area used to be the temporary home for the Bedouin. Now there are many refugees living here as well. There are many Syrians living over there, around 10 families. 15 Syrian families and 35 Bedouin families happily received city's aid supplies. As refugees are forced to flee their homes and seek safety in another country, volunteers hope someday they can settle down. Tima Dr. Huang Shushen dedicated her medical career in safeguarding the oral health of the disadvantaged population in Taiwan. Even with the diagnosis of cancer, she never stopped serving at various free clinics. Unfortunately, she passed away due to acute liver failure at the age of 63. Afraid that the patient is too nervous, so she patiently explains every step of the procedure. My heart goes out to each patient. They are all bedbound, and many are not even able to express verbally their sufferings. Dr. Huang has a very compassionate heart. In Taiwan, there are many dentists with qualifications in anesthesiology like her. Even more rare is the fact that she has been doing long-term care for the disadvantaged population. When we have the ability to help others, we will hope to give more of ourselves, especially to those around you that you care the most about. Helping to safeguard the oral health of patients in both vegetative states or with severe disabilities has been her long-term mission. Even after learning about her cancer diagnosis years ago, she never stopped serving at various free clinics, even throughout her periods of treatment. 
Even with being ill, she always looked on the bright side. It actually motivated her to dedicate more time in seizing every opportunity to serve others. Unfortunately, impermanence came knocking. On May 6, Dr. Huang Suxian passed away due to acute liver failure. We lost a very compassionate and diligent living bodhisattva. Dedicating herself all the way till the end, in mid-March, fighting through her illness, served at the National Sangha Free Clinic, leaving behind her last free clinic footprints. On March 16, she went to get a checkup in the afternoon. To my knowledge, the very next day, she was already not feeling so well. Always putting the patients first, Dr. Huang Suxian was awarded the Medical Dedication Award in the past. She's the pride of her family and an everlasting role model for the medical community. In preparation for the Buddha Day ceremony, the participating Dharma Masters and city volunteers have been practicing diligently for the performances. Today we'll take you to one of the rehearsals. The Buddha Day ceremony is arriving soon. All of the Dharma Masters and city volunteers have been rehearsing for the grand event. Leading volunteer Tsai Yuling has been assisting with the practices. She can feel the devotion of all the participants and she's very grateful. Actually, they are very compassionate. I saw them taking notes. I was deeply touched by their devotion. The Dhamma Masters have put lots of efforts into the rehearsal, which makes me want to work harder to ensure the success of the ceremony. Li Qingsen has shouldered the responsibility of being a leading volunteer for many years. As a Jingsi disciple, he also makes sure that every move reaches the standards in order to present the dignity of Dharma Master. Five, six, then bring your arm back to here. If master's hands goes up, your ropes will eventually go down like this. Coming back to volunteer Tsai Yuling, who also has basic dance skills as a leading volunteer this year, she's in charge of the musical performances. This has helped the team tremendously. Volunteer Tsai Yuling pays attention to every tempo and every move. She does a lot of homework at home, helping the Dharma masters with the rehearsals to let them feel like they are actually there at the ceremony. Being able to participate in the annual grand event, everyone wants to seize the time to work together. I'm glad to bring up the atmosphere of dignity and respect. I remember the last time when I tapped the bell and the sound went well with the music. At that moment, you felt really good. The Dharma Masters and city volunteers want to present the beauty of Buddhism at the ceremony and inspire people around the world. In Myanmar, more than a thousand residents from 19 villages joined the Buddha Day ceremony. Many villagers had received help from Ciji, so they came with their rice banks to reciprocate the assistance. Villagers carry the rice bank in their arms and on their head for the hour plus walk, which didn't dampen the cheerfulness in their hearts. The event is festive as 1,000 villagers across 19 tribal villages came with their whole families to participate in Siji's Buddha Day ceremony. In a prefabricated house Siji built for them, there were no lighting systems, but the natural light from outside lighted up their heart. The indoor space is not enough for everyone, but villagers lend their yards to set up the ceremony venue. Many villagers came to the ceremony and has fulfilled Dharma Master Zheng Yin's wish because we have more volunteers now. Over 19 villages have joined the Rice Bank campaign. The Master hoped that we can practice the Buddhist teachings from our heart 
and with our actions so that we can get rid of all the bad habits. Some villagers have invited over a hundred friends to join. Coming to the Buddha Day ceremony, we can pray to the Buddha sincerely and also enrich our wisdom. All of the villagers I invited were very happy. Villagers gave their rice bank, which was accumulated with respect and compassion. Ziqing also brought children to give a tea ceremony to the elders so that they can show filial piety in action. <coughs> Everyone enjoyed a joyful and satisfying event and they went home with a peaceful mind and cheerful smiles. A Singapore city volunteer was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer back in 2013. Recently, his health condition worsened and he has been hospitalized. Since he hopes to attend the Buddha Day ceremony, city volunteers decided to bring the celebration to him at the hospital. He told me that by going on home visits with the volunteers, you get to learn so much from the care recipients. But now his illness is getting worse. He has a compassionate heart, but he feels powerless at the moment. Even though he's lying in the hospital bed due to his illness, He Gaoui is still constantly thinking about doing Siji's work. Especially being the month of May, with the Buddha Day ceremony around the corner, he has a wish he would like to see come true. Every year for the Buddha Day ceremony, he has always been the head of the transportation team. So this time I told him that, I'll push you in a wheelchair to attend the event. The agreement with the family may not be able to come true due to the sudden worsening of the illness. However, the Siji family had another plan in mind. His wife quietly told me that, out of the blue, he picked up the cell phone and told her to call me. He kept on talking about a birthday and I thought maybe he's referring to Buddha's birthday as in Buddha Day Ceremony. Maybe he couldn't put all of the words together, so we all just decided, why don't we just do a mobile Buddha Day Ceremony for him here at the hospital. The simple Buddha Day ceremony made his wish come true. It also finally gave him a peace of mind. When we came last night, he fell into a semi coma. It wasn't like how he is today. I was really taken back from it. His mind was finally at ease. He felt at peace with everything. So it was really meaningful that we were able to conduct the mobile Buddha Day ceremony for him. Since you're in good spirits today, why don't we let your children have the chance to express their thoughts and gratitude towards you for all these years? Everyone in the hospital room are all of his closest friends and family members. Everyone gave their best wishes and promised to meet again in the next lifetime. In Taiwan, nurse practitioner Zheng Jieju, who works at Taipei City Hospital, is a dedicated medical professional. While caring for his grandfather, he was inspired to diligently study nursing. After joining the workforce, he became Taipei City Hospital's youngest nurse practitioner. Nurse practitioner Zheng Jieju checks the conditions of the patients every morning before the doctor makes his ward round. Nurse practitioner needs to work on one's skills and assist the doctors. This is about self-growth. I've chosen to become a nurse practitioner because I like to come into contact with the patients. Of course, I face pressure because I need to face the patient's illness, pain, and even life or death. Mindfully caring for the patients, Zen has won many people's recognition. However, back in high school, he was once rebellious. He was encouraged by his father to study a nursing school. Back then, his grandfather was hospitalized due to illness, and therefore he was inspired to study nursing to help people in need. I strive to learn the skill better than anyone else. I think about how to apply the skill while listening to the patient's pain. In 2005, when Taipei City Hospital was inaugurated, Zen joined the medical team with the referral of a relative. His work performance was recognized by others. Then he was recommended to undergo training. He passed the national exam to become the youngest nurse practitioner at Taipei City Hospital. It takes a lot of work to someone to turn from a nurse to a nurse practitioner. When I interacted with Zen, I saw that he has set up goals for himself. Therefore, his foresight has helped him achieve his goals. I think he is able to shoulder responsibilities and lead other people. 
This job requires one to become the bridge between doctors and patients. It also involves a lot of pressure. Zhen takes care of seriously ill patients in the Department of Oncology. When facing abrupt situations, being a male nurse, Zhen has always been the reliable support of the patients, their families, and his colleagues. When we rushed to the scene, the patient was vomiting while sitting on the toilet. Blood was gushing out like a fire hydrant. Back then, the patient families were screaming loudly. Blood kept gushing out. For the families, it was a terrible experience. For inexperienced nurses, it was also a horrible experience. He is very mindful while at work. In addition, he is very warm gentleman. Sometimes he will encourage and support the younger nurses. If the younger nurse has encountered some setbacks, he will stand up and protect us. He will communicate with the patient's families, making us feel safe. Facing illnesses, most patients and their families feel very heavy-hearted. Therefore, Zhen would encourage them to think positively. Life goes on regardless of whatever you are suffering or if you are happy. When you suffer, your families who accompany you also feel the pain. It is important to let the patients and their families relax a little bit. As time goes on, more and more men have joined the ranks of nurses. With their services, the medical professionals can provide better care to the patients and their families. In New Taipei City, the Xiufeng Elementary School held a school fair to celebrate its anniversary. The event organizer invited people to use reusable utensils and reduce the use of plastic bags. Recently, Xiufeng Elementary School conducted a fair to celebrate its anniversary. The theme for this event is to encourage more people to bring and use eco-friendly utensils. In addition, the fair didn't provide any plastic bags as a way to promote the concept of reducing plastic usage. We should reduce the usage of plastic materials because they can decompose. I hope we can educate our children on the topic of environmental protection, how to create a sustainable environment, and what actions should we take in order to save our planet. As Mother's Day is coming soon, a lesson of making the carnation flower pot by using the recycled materials has been carried out. Each pot also comes with a Jinx aphorism. Under the guidance of Dai mothers, the students learn to sing a song for their mothers. When they told me that they're going to sing the song, I was already crying at home because I was deeply touched, and the lyrics to the song are very meaningful and moving. This year's school fair is different than before, as there are less garbage on the campus. Moreover, the atmosphere of the event is filled with love and warmth. To celebrate Mother's Day, Tainan City Senior High School Elementary Department held various activities. While first graders performed feet washing ceremony for their parents, third graders served tea to express their gratitude. We'll leave you with these images. Happy Mother's Day. Goodbye.